Hello everyone, this is an overview of uh, what the course framework, what the course structure looks like with lead inclusion. So you can see I've got a number of courses that I'm teaching or I'm administrator of. Um, and similarly, once someone creates a Schoology account and joins a course, they would see this in their dashboard when they click on courses here. So we're taking a look at course one for Keto. This is a Foundations of Inclusion course um, that we're teaching in um, in Keto. So this content's very you know similar to uh, content that what we would start with um, with with anyone that we're working with. Um, and so if we click on any module, these modules here one through four were taught in person. So this course began with two days in person and these four modules were taught there. So there are no um, video lectures. I think there is one on co-teaching, but there is, um, you know, all of the content was delivered in person, but this is where the materials are. So, you know, for module three on focused learning support, if we click on that module, you'll see there is a handout. You know, there's a handout for um, the discussion and, and, and many lectures here. Uh, another handout that we're using on planning uh, for co-teaching here. Uh, there is a there is a co-teaching webinar that I did that I posted just to help people remember the models of co-teaching and some of the um, key features. We have websites where we send people readings uh, that we post. So um, all of the materials for each of the modules is here. But again, these happened in person. And then... Once the modules go online, so once we're finished working together for two or three days, then uh, the remaining content is online. So if we click on any of these, uh, so here's one on cognitive support, we see some extra content. So there is the purpose of the module, as, as with all of them. Um, but in these, we'll see that there's additional content that, that we've prepared uh, online. So this is a this is a, a video lecture, video content on cognitive supports. This one's about an hour long. There, some are shorter, some are longer. Uh, handout, of course, um, as the rest, and then additional resources. So, here we have websites, um, articles. So these are uh, uh, journal articles and uh, a, a report to read. And I guess in this one we we had a lot of. <laughs> A lot of readings but to, to provide additional uh, research-based support for for what we're offering in the lecture now when uh, when people finish watching the lecture and, and a lot of in a lot of schools a lot of districts um, many times there's a you know, there are small groups or even large groups that come together to to do this together so uh, even though I'm not there facilitating the group can watch the video lectures together and then engage in discussion then. Uh, that works really well. It doesn't have to be the whole group. It can be people come together with a partner or with small groups. If that doesn't work, then, then people watch at their leisure. Uh, it, it is my experience that, that people stay, more people stay fully engaged when there is uh, uh, some, some partnering or some, some group work. When they finish um, with this piece, and they've, they've got additional materials that they want, uh, that, that they can have to, to support this, then they engage in a, a discussion online. So this one was um, um, the cognitive support, so I've got a discussion on cognitive supports, but also a discussion specifically on intellectual disability. So we can see, um, if we click here, that we have people um, engaging in a threaded discussion about um, you know about this topic, so I've, I've given a prompting question, and, and then people have engaged in that in that topic. So for each of the ones that are online, there's a there's a, a discussion, and that can be handled in a couple of ways. So people can can individually pop into the discussion, or if the district has gone about this, or the school has gone about this, in having small groups get together. Those groups can have their conversations in person, but then someone from the group uh, goes on and, 
and uh, response in the discussion. The idea is that for this to be a threaded discussion, for people to be spending significant amounts of time in discussion each week or each couple of weeks, and uh, to be responding to one another, not just answering a question, but uh, so that they're engaged across groups, across the entire cohort, you know, continually engaged in these topics and integrating uh, the content into their everyday work. In this example, you'll see I've got a reflective paper. Um, the reflective paper is a, it's a nice assignment. I only require people to do it if they're seeking graduate credit. Each of these discussions is reflective. So um, the idea is that people would um, fully engage and reflect uh, throughout this. But this is in general how it looks uh, and I'm happy to happy to answer your questions.